Hi, how are you? I hope you have read enough today. I'm Esther Sepp, I read and research comics and literature, and in this video I would like to talk about my book Comics and the Body, Drawing, Reading and Vulnerability. It was published in December 2020 by The Ohio State University Press. As the title suggests, this book is about comics and the body, about the many ways in which our bodies are related to comics. I'm absolutely grateful to the individuals and institutions who supported my research and also who helped me during the writing of this book. As some of you know, I live in Hungary. Hungary is not a land of comics, so these friends and these institutions were particularly important um, and without them I really could not have done this work. I'm fond of the cover, designed and drawn by Amanda Weiss, because it perfectly represents the ideas that I'm after in this book. If you study it closely, you will see that the central figure is drawn by using various qualities of lines, by various pens and pencils. This is a very important idea in the first part of my book. The background emphasizes paper, the material of the book, and how our bodies want to touch this. Such an interaction with comics is a key idea of the second part of my book. And the figure itself, in its nakedness, shows the quality and experience of vulnerability, which is an idea that binds the two parts of my book together. In the introduction, which is a rather long chapter, I explain the theoretical background of my project and in the five chapters of the book I provide close readings of individual works or sometimes comparative readings of two works. My aim in this book is to study the making of comics and reading comics in a single theoretical framework and this framework is provided by realizing and acknowledging that the body plays a very important role in both activities. And because of the involvement of body via movement, via interpretation, via performance, it is essential that we think about the ethical consequences of inhabiting a body and performing and acting by our bodies. And this is how the ethics of vulnerability comes into the picture. Vulnerability is not a negative thing here. Rather, it is a quality that is given to all of us, which gives opportunities for us to engage in dialogues and get transformed there. As you will find out even from this short video, dialogue is a really important aspect of my work and I write a lot about it and the risks it involves. I think of comics as dialogue. We experience comics when we are reading it in a dialogical situation. And making comics is also a means of expression in which the artist performs these lines via movement, via the body, and also initiates the dialogue with the reader via the actual material object of the printed comic. In the introduction, I briefly summarize what I mean by embodiment, vulnerability, how comics can be a dialogue, and all those various very interesting theories that are related to drawing. Particularly, art practitioners and art historians have some really cool ideas of how we can think of the line, what are the most important associations, such as authenticity, which will be a key idea in the first chapter when I read Linda Berry's comics. And then I move on to drawing bodies and how drawing one's avatar is a performative act, which involves reflecting on one's body and also transforming it on paper again and again and again. And this way, transforming the body by acts of drawing, by the line, is a way to experience and to explore one's vulnerability and also to question the normative body. I also study how backgrounds are drawn, particularly in Joe Sacco's Safe Area Garage Day and The Fixer. And I argue that cross-hatching can be an ethical statement. With chapters 4 and 5, I turn to reading comics and study how we respond to the represented bodies or how we respond to lines themselves when they are abstract. The idea that drawing is related to the body comes up in more than one chapters, as well as the realistic drawing. In chapter 2 I study realistically drawn skin, and in chapter 4 I study our embodied experiences 
and we read and study comics. In chapter 5, I turn to how we interact with comics as objects, and I study Katie Green's Lighter Than My Shadow and Joe Sacco's Great War to find out how we interact and perform the meanings of these comics, how the actual physical objects are important not only for us readers when we are interacting with them, but the objects themselves carry an embodied link to the represented bodies as well. Finally, the conclusion is a comic that I made myself and I'm really proud of it. This is my book. You might find it relevant or interesting. You can buy it at Ohio State University's website. If you need more information, my website is also available on the internet as well as my email address or Patreon page. If you feel like contacting me, please do. I wish you guys all the best.